Hello everyone and welcome to the 11th lecture of this course which is introduction to remote sensing. In this particular discussion we are going to have a discussion on image interpretation and especially we would like to focus on geological landforms, rock types and structures because I think that once the data has been acquired by a, by a satellite a sensor then it has to be used for some purposes. So, one example I am going to show here that how various landforms which are present on the surface of the earth can be identify or discern very easily using satellite image. Remember that when we were discussing about the advantages of a remote sensing data, one of the advantages is said about the synoptic view. Especially for a geological mapping or a things related with earth sciences, and when we go on the ground, we see a very small area and we are not at vantage point. That means, we, we see at a, a very small area just standing on the ground. But when we use the satellite data, then we are having because of this remote sensing technology, we, we are having a synoptic view and that, that providing a, a data or information about a large area information like in our case suppose if I am interested to study the landforms then a large number of landforms are available. This example is of course, is a mosaic and in the background a digital elevation model is there top of which the Landsat ETM plus images have been draped here and you are seeing a complete seamless mosaic or part of India. Especially I would like to focus on major landforms which you can identify very easily. Anyone who does not have even the background of remote sensing or background of geology or earth sciences can still identify and because of this 3D perspective view available through digital elevation model or even with single satellite image even the depth perception comes because of the presence of shadow orientation of shadow with the reference or relative to the viewer we get the depth perception. So, here what we can identify uh, this uh, mountain chain which is the Himalayan mountain very easily. And if we are having some information, some further knowledge we can say that these are the highest part of Himalayan mountain system uh, which are snow and ice covered. So, we are having snow as well as glaciers part above that then this is the Tibetan plateau is there and on that uh, we, we see lot of lakes including our Mansarovar lake as well. When we come just south of uh, this uh, Himalaya, we can identify other large uh, uh, landforms uh, uh, like for example, uh, the, the river systems, the Ganges river is there, the Yamna river is there, the Brahmaputra river which basically originate from Tibet, it is called Sangpo in Tibet and it enters India here in through this uh, uh, Assam state largely and then it goes into the way of Bengal. And uh, even because a digital elevation model is in the background, so even you are seeing uh, some information about the landforms which are present in the sea itself, uh, especially this uh, uh, north 90 degree ridge as well. And we come in the uh, plateau part of India, then we are seeing the different and uh, the Bindhyan ranges and uh, also Aravalis are there, Bindhyans are there, Satpuras are there, all kind of mountain systems, river valleys, everything uh, becomes very easily identified. This image is from Google Earth where such products have been generated. We can zoom it and uh, identify different objects including the desert part of our Indian desert as well as some part of uh, Pakistan and a, a very good agricultural land way which you can also identify in part of uh, Punjab and Haryana and western UP which you can see including some parts of Pakistan. On the eastern side uh, what we see different uh, geological structures, we will see the zoom part of it and uh, how uh, this uh, uh, these uh, the arrangements of different landforms which are present. So, it is because remote sensing is providing data in multispectral. So, we see things in color. Remote sensing is also providing data so that we can create digital elevation models. 
So, can we can get the depth perception and also remote sensing is providing data uh, to a large area after doing the image processing and making mosaics we can see large number of uh, various types of landforms identify very easily and uh, that thing. So, like mountains, plains we can identify valleys, river valleys, we can identify lakes, we can identify desert, we have we can identify glaciers, I have already mentioned in this part we can identify and so on. This is not exhaustive, uh, this identification of things uh, keeps going. The only problem with the remote sensing of the earth is that because earth is having atmosphere, sometimes you are having clouds and uh, because of this overcast, uh, we do not get a high quality satellite image. If we compare these satellite images of say Mars, where we do not have much atmosphere, very thin atmosphere and therefore, satellite images are very clear. You can identify each and every type, almost every type of landform on surface of Mars like using images of Mangalyan. So, zoom part is uh, so like for northeast India as you can see that uh, there are series of uh, uh, these uh, uh, antiform and synforms plunging folds are there and uh, same time you can also see the Sundarvan area the Brahmaputra is coming. You can see the concentration of uh, sediments and, uh, and the, that extent and uh, so on so forth. So, the, uh, you can identify as many as uh, the uh, landforms which are present in a particular part of the earth very easily. Like full belt I gave the example of northeast India is a series of host and gravens and uh, plunging folds are present here and this is radar image, this is uh, your uh, image from Landsat ETM mosaic and uh, if we combine these two our interpretation analysis will improve further. So, we will be able to identify more types of landforms, but if we use in a separate uh, form then our limitation becomes. And uh, finally, you can reconstruct such models uh, showing that uh, how these lines which are nothing but the antique lines which are asymmetric uh, are shown here and uh, we can discern, we can create the models to further understand because the purpose here is uh, not just only understanding, but further exploration, maybe exploration for water, maybe exploration for oil and gas and this part is having uh, quite of these resources. So, that is why the analysis interpretation of different landforms becomes very, very important and uh, to identify on images, reconstruct uh, their models and try to understand what is beneath the surface. Though uh, most of the satellite data except radar data in case of desert areas might penetrate the wave, uh, wave, wave can penetrate to up to few uh, meters in a dry sand, but otherwise the remote sensing provides only the, the surficial information information about the surface of the earth, whatever the features which are present, whether geological structures, landforms, vegetation and uh, water bodies, glaciers, uh, snow peaks, uh, covered uh, peaks and so on so forth. But uh, using uh, the help of uh, uh, this uh, earth sciences or geology, we can create uh, uh, models which will can give us the depth information as well, what is beneath that. And this can be fi finally, uh, these things can be confirmed by using geophysical methods, which can give you the subsurface information. So, what is happening nowadays? Any area which has to be explored for anything, for mineral, for natural resources, even for natural disaster, or for oil or gas or whatever, first people resort to satellite images and they try to extract as much as possible the information from these satellite images. So, remember that statement a picture a normal picture tells 1000 words, whereas a satellite image can tell 10,000 words. So, that is the advantage that we not only we identify the landforms, not only identify different features or objects present on the earth, but then we try to infer the information. We look that how this information, uh, how this landform has formed what would be the condition in subsurface and if I am looking for water, ground water, then where I can find the ground water. 
and if I looking for a, a oil which is in a very special circumstances I can find in ge special geological arrangement then still I can infer that one. So, this the nowadays for all kinds of uh, surveys or investigations which involves the land surface of the earth first people resort to satellite images including in natural disaster conditions. So, such examples are I am showing here that how symmetric asymmetric uh, uh, anticlines anti forms uh, can be identified and then infer and then when we can estimate how things are in the in the in the depth. So, if a synclines are looking syn forms are looking they are they are being seen through the satellite something like this series of lines, but they are basically part of a syn form uh, whether it is a system uh, symmetrical or asymmetrical we can still see this we can get that information very easily through satellite images and then we can reconstruct such models. So, in a 2D surface this is how it looks but we can construct the 3D surface and see that this construction has been done using satellite image and in the background we are having digital elevation model and that model too has been derived from satellite data either using your stereo pair data or using SAR interferometry technique. So, there are several digital elevation models which have been derived from satellite uh, based remote sensing either stereo or uh, SAR interferometry are available free of cost for all parts of the world. So, we can infer we can make our understanding about different uh, landforms different features which are present on the earth implying including uh, in the background our digital elevation model as shown in this example. So, on surface you see features something like this in the satellite image you see features something like this you can create a 3D surface. Uh, or perspective view using digital elevation model and draping over satellite image like this and then finally, you can make a model to make a full understanding not only on the surface, but subsurface conditions as well. So, that that makes a exploration of oil, gas, petroleum anything is much easier and reliable. So, we started with simply surface information then got involved of digital elevation model and then some understanding about the geology of the area and then finally, reconstruction of a model. So, this gives a complete details about thing. Now, we want further details more confirmation more reliable information then geophysical uh, 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 experiments can be done geophysical prospecting can be done geophysical techniques can be employed to make things more reliable. Uh, similarly, here what we are seeing uh, that uh, how a river has crossed all these uh, geological features especially these plunging anticline and so on. So, we, uh, we can uh, based on this we also infer the age of a uh, fluvial system compared to the geological structure. This has cut across that means uh, that uh, uh, these uh, structures were later formed river was there and uh, so on uh, we can uh, infer so many other. So, first uh, the data acquisition from satellite data then comes analysis interpretation inferences and basically then application. So, this is how this sequence goes. So, just images are not sufficient they these has to be analyzed these has to be interpreted and based on the interpretation along with some other data sets maybe in on GIS platform we put them along with other data sets and then we try to infer the structure, the subsurface information, the surface information and so on so forth. So, this is how the geological landforms can be identified again examples of a part of Pakistan because we have less vegetation and therefore, all these geological landforms are very very clearly visible gas reservoirs are distributed in anti forms or anti clines a giant gas field was discovered in this northern part of the structure here in this part of the structure. So, the initial investigation nowadays as I have mentioned always now starting with the satellite data. So, one is looking for oil, gas, petroleum or any other thing that is the best way of starting this thing. Similarly, these folds are a, a, a good traps 
for natural gas and oil. So, that is why they are, they are important. So, these landforms, geological landforms which we are seeing, uh, their interpretation and their, uh, um, um, their understanding about subsurface conditions can give some clues about availability of such uh, natural, natural resources. Again, uh, this is about the Jagros mountain fold belt of uh, uh, satellite of Iran, where you can see that uh, there are many several plunging anticline and syn synclines uh, are there and these areas are also having potential of providing oil and gas and uh, same with this uh, Jagros field again another uh, high resolution images a 3D perspective view is also there. So, that you can get better idea about different landforms which are present may be some idea about the subsurface conditions and may be uh, some idea about the available natural resources in subsurface conditions. And uh, like dome structures you get, dome structures are also uh, useful for certain kind of natural resources. Uh, similarly, like this is volcano and uh, this is volcanic uh, neck uh, you can see very easily and uh, then the lava which has come. and uh, important thing to note here, this is false color composite and see the growth of vegetation. The lava uh, in few years time gets converted to a very highly fertile soil and therefore, uh, the vegetation growth you can see because in false color composite as uh, discussed earlier, the infrared channel is assigned red color. And in infrared channel, the vegetation is having highest reflectance and therefore, in false color composite, in a standard false color composite or FCC, vegetation will appear green. It high dense vegetation or healthy vegetation will, ap uh, will appear in false color composite as red and that is why you are seeing. So, in infrared channel, it is having highest reflectance, but in false color composite, it will appear red. So, this is how the interpretation has to be done that you are seeing the vegetation in red color which is healthy very fertile land this is what. Uh, so, uh, if uh, there is a water available soil is very good and uh, people go around and uh, do agriculture there. So, many volcanoes where the availability of water is there they are uh, that uh, the land becomes very fertile and uh, though uh, from if they are dormant or extinct uh, uh, volcanoes it is uh, very good and uh, one of the example of from India is the Deccan Trev is a large uh, basaltic terrain which covers a large part of Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. The uh, soil is uh, black cotton soil again very fertile land. And uh, this is a, a desert uh, landforms which you are seeing sand dunes of different types of dunes you are seeing endless dunes of Nabibi Africa say typical longitudinal dunes which are uh, you know longer lines which you are seeing here sand dunes in the area formed parallel to the wind out direction. You can even identify based on the these landforms orientation the prevalent wind direction as well. So, one is the image another one is the analysis interpretation and then inferences. Inference here is you can make what is the prevalent wind direction as well. And this is the our desert part from the images from Google Earth which is having uh, various lens set images. Uh, they are uh, in the background you are having digital elevation model as you can see uh, that it is Haryana Punjab is full of this is a, a true color image therefore, you are seeing vegetation in green then you are having desert part hardly any vegetation is there in part of Rajasthan up to the Indo-Pakistan border. On the other side also some desert part is there, but in this Indus river valley you are having a good vegetation there as similar to what we are having in Punjab. So, desert landforms can also be identified and also you are seeing some part of this Kach. This is ground feature of those ground photograph of and sand dunes how they look on the ground whereas, on the satellite images uh, the image is taken from top. So, they look different 
This is great dike of Zimbabwe. It's a very long dike, approximately 2.46 million uh, billion years, valuable metal deposits. So, but if you are having satellite image, if that area has not been explored, one can go through uh, the data and can identify such features, go in the field, take the sample, analyze the data and one may find a valuable metal deposits like here it has been found uh, which is in, which is having platinum and chromium and uh, and say all over the uh, great dike area. This is a, a glacier landform uh, Malaspina uh, glacier Alaska and this is very unique uh, feature on the surface of the earth where a glacier uh, not a kind of a valley glacier, but a kind of a alluvial fan kind of a glacier in a circular body. There are some valley glaciers are also seen. So, not only in satellite images you identify landforms of desert area or mountain, but you can also identify uh, glacier landforms, fluvial landforms and several other types of uh, landforms are there. This is very famous uh, glacier of Alaska Malaspina in glacier there are you can also see uh, this is false color composite you can also see in lower parts uh, the growth of vegetation forest and uh, then uh, water bodies uh, glaciated lakes and other features can also be seen and then sea part is also there and the interface between land and sea can also be uh, identified. This is a 3D perspective view of the same Malaspina Alaska glacier, valley glaciers you can identify, but this is a unique feature uh, which is make a fan shaped kind of glacier because it is uh, like alluvial fan, but it is a glacier because it suddenly it is leaving the mountains coming in the uh, plain areas, but still it is very cold. So, the ice is there, snow is there and therefore, it looks like a fan but it is a glacier not typical valley glaciers as shown here. Uh, I have been mentioning that remote sensing data especially nowadays available from 1972 Landsat MSS till 2016 a complete time series data is available from different sensors on board of different satellites. All these archives are now almost available free of cost on net and therefore, time series analysis can be done, chain detection analysis can be done and this example is on that. And a very famous our Gangotri glacier from where uh, our uh, river Ganges starts in, uh, originates. Uh, as you can see uh, based this is not based on satellite data information based on uh, certain topographic maps or some other ground informations that uh, the glacier and the snout of the glacier, the beginning of that glacier or the mouth of the glacier was here in 1780. But uh, once we entered here and uh, now uh, this is the era from the satellite data, what we see that uh, it has retreated to this extent and you, you can also see the scale. So, in roughly about uh, 3 or 4 kilometers. Uh, up it has gone, it has retreated and uh, this is the situation in 2001. This information of 2001 has of course come from satellite images. If we get a another latest one of say 2016, this retreat we might observe here. So, if we get the successive images, a time series data, first of all what we can see that how a landform is changing, maybe a glaciated landform may be a desert landform does not matter or fluvial landform. So, one thing how things have changed this thing can be done through the time series or chain detection analysis. And what is the speed the velocity of or how quickly things are changing and it is not necessary that the things will change as they have been changing uh, uh, like between 1780 to 1935 that the change may be faster or lower depending on the meteorological condition and other things if we or weather conditions if we talk only about the glaciers or landforms. But there are there are changes which are sudden like related with earthquakes, there are changes which occurs in within few seconds. 
these changes too can be detected by using implying a pre earthquake image and post earthquake image. Remember when I was discussing the advantages of remote sensing data, not only it provides the synoptic view, not only it provides the digital data, not only it provides on regular basis, but it also provides the unbiased recordings. So, here the manual input or a human input might be uh, uh, biased, but based on the satellite data these are more reliable information or inputs which are coming and which are making our understanding about uh, in this example about glaciers, maybe a fluvial system how rivers are shifting a particular river at a particular section how it is shifting with time or how these landforms are changing what is the speed of the change one. So, by looking the past and the changes and the way things have changed we can also think about the project future we can project to the future. So, if they say in case of this Gangotri glacier the change continues and if we know that how things have changed in past we can also project and uh, that in future this is now might appear somewhere here that prediction and that modeling can also be done after learning through time series data about uh, 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 this uh, any any landform or any feature which is changing feature on the surface of the earth. So, that is the advantages whether deserts are increasing or reducing a glaciers or glaciated part of say Himalaya is increasing number of glaciers are in increasing or reducing or uh, a fluvial system more flooding are uh, occurring or loss. Everything can be assessed through these time series data. Their speed can also be assessed that the, how the things are changing and then we can do some modeling. We can predict that how in near future things will change. So, based on this unreliable synoptic digital uh, data a uh, lot many such studies can be done. Uh, another example of uh, this uh, uh, that you see this fluvial landforms, fluvial landforms are again very important especially from uh, sediment transport point of view or even normal transport point of view from groundwater recharge point of view and also uh, uh, others like uh, uh, vegetation growth, algae growth and uh, so many other things are there because these keeps changing. So, from another a natural disaster that is flooding. So, from flooding point of view the study of such landforms fluvial landforms are important. If we are having time series data as available now today for about more than 45 years the data available we can see how things have changed in past especially with the fluvial system. Similarly, I am giving now example our, our own Indian system this is the Ganges this is the Yamuna and uh, this is the Ilawad uh, where these are uh, this is uh, in Sangam and see that uh, these paleo channels they are remnants of extinct courses of uh, rivers Yamuna and Ganges. So, that means what they are telling that few years back the uh, your uh, Yamuna was flowing somewhere here few years back Ganga was flowing here it is shifting how how much it will shift in future or whether it will come back. This can be analyzed it is being analyzed implying time series remote sensing data not only for Ganga, Yamna, Brahmaputra almost all rivers which are having migrating characteristics and uh, they are changing uh, fluvial landforms can be studied. And uh, even if we are having much older data we can tell that in which year the uh, river Yamna was flowing in this part. And uh, these are all having different names paleo channels uh, Oxbow lakes. So, these are the paleo channels of Yamna this is Oxbow lake which is still having water after some time it may become dry and so on so forth. So, these fluvial systems in lower reaches keep changing their study is very important. So, that we can assess the uh, uh, flood potential in this area this is the Brahmaputra, this is the braided channel of Brahmaputra and uh, several other uh, streams or rivers are also meeting in the Brahmaputra and uh, Brahmaputra almost every year is bringing flood high concern high 
uh, sediments uh, is to, because of high erosion in Himalaya and uh, the high concentration of sediments are coming and the channels are braided and uh, there is no single channel and uh, it is in a wide valley uh, creates havoc almost every year due to flooding. Paleo channels are there how uh, people have studied that how Brahmaputra has moved from one place to another and even can predict how in future uh, things will move in a fluvial system. So, that is the advantage of having remote sensing data. If you stand a, if you go there stand on one point you do not see that a, uh, such a synoptic view of uh, Brahmaputra then your uh, thinking will be very narrow in that sense. Uh, another very good uh, fluvial feature uh, which is also called the sorrow of Bihar which is a Kosi river. If you, uh, you would be surprised to know that about uh, two and, uh, 250 years ago uh, this uh, uh, Kosi river was flowing uh, here in this part that means on the eastern side and uh, in these uh, 250 years uh, later now it is uh, flowing here. So, this is this has made a world largest uh, alluvial fan it has been moving moving, but uh, there will be a limit after that it cannot go westward. So, one day it will start coming back again and every year almost every year it is bringing flood and that is uh, creating lot of problems in uh, part of Bihar. And uh, uh, another, another thing uh, we have studied. Uh, that uh, using satellite data we can study that how it has migrated, what was the speed and whether it has started coming back and uh, these uh, courses are changing or not. All these things can be studied through satellite images. So, that is the advantage of having remote sensing especially I focus on uh, geological landforms features which we see very quickly on satellite images especially like in products of like Google Earth and other and then we can start interpreting those features and uh, then of course, we can make some inferences if we are having old data or archive or time series data then we can see how things have changed in past and also we can predict about future we can model the things that how things will change in future. So, thank you very much.